Hey guys, today I'm going to address, well, first of all, a lot of you think that I make this stuff up where if someone reports a video, they need to say who it is. So in the past, I've said a certain name, Frank blank, and videos have all been taken down. Now, it doesn't tell me that Frank took down my video. It just says a individual, but it's pretty obvious uh, for the video. In this case, it is a Dan. So this video was not about Frank, although future videos may be about Frank. That video was about Dan. So we'll, I want to focus a ton on why I'm not banned. Uh, many people will believe I'm not banned because I am a minority, but Travis Wu was also a minority and he got banned for what I think was very trivial, which ended up being a moderator of a Facebook group that he may or may not have even known he was still moderator of and a meme posted on the group and then everyone the proud Emma so Emma Handy writes the Tolarian Community College scripts I did not know that until I watched was watching one of the professor's video videos and it all kind of makes sense that Tolarian pays her to make you know the content for him and his channel well, Emma has, since that time, that was her claim to fame, was I'm shaking so much in anger. Now, a little bit of background about Emma. Emma had a different name when she was writing for Yu-Gi-Oh! Community. And I would say, after reading some of her Pojo uh, articles, I guess you could call them articles, they seem very, very not good. Um, and I'm not going to go ahead and read them to you, but... Yeah, Emma had a different name back then, and she was writing articles on Yu-Gi-Oh! And they, I mean, when you talk about harassment and people being offended, I would assume anyone reading that article would be offended because he's calling Yu-Gi-Oh! people really lame names. But anyway, uh, back to my point. Uh, Tiwoo, uh, one of the more, more premier Asian players, he got manhandled and banned they banned him when he made the pro tour so they sent him a ticket and he couldn't really go because he wasn't allowed to play at the pro tour anymore and that was a expected income source for him and they took that away and then they also tried to tax him on the ticket as well the plane ticket that he could no longer use which was pretty uh crazy so i don't I don't believe it is based on the fact that I'm a minority and Jeremy, so Jeremy is the good comparison here. Jeremy is a white male. We're about the same age. And I don't think that's the real reason because they also got Travis. And if I had to be in a position, I would say Travis lost more than Unsleeved Media did, even though Travis was only banned for two years, mainly because Travis was at the Pro Tour. He had made the Pro Tour. He had done work to be there. And over a meme that he himself was not involved in, he did not comment on it. He did not post it. He did not like it. It was just a meme. And along comes Emma Handy. So if if you see Emma Handy and request to join your Magic Facebook group, please, please do not let her join. Because my gosh, everything's going to get reported to Wizards of the Coast. And that's what happened there. So back to the question. Uh, so I'll just say, I don't think it's because I'm a minority um, that I am not banned. So what is the other situation? Am I being less timid? Am I being less bold against Wedge and the professor sometimes? Although I haven't really gone against a professor recently, but there are some things that he has done that I don't agree with. And maybe that will be a future video, but Wedge especially. Uh, they got Tolarian for harassment, for harassing Christine Sprinkles. Now, Christine Sprinkles was never paid by Wizard of the Coast. She was never an employee. She was never even a vendor. At most, he got a free hotel, maybe a little bit of stipend from Channel Fiebel or the person running the event. And yet, she was on the image. She was the image on Wizard of the Coast, right? on a promotional material. Like this is copyright infringement beyond belief. So if I wanted to use a, so you can use, you have 
fair use. But fair use should not really be commercial. So commercial trumps fair use. If I'm trying to make money from using Christine Sprinkles, and I'm not criticizing, I'm not doing anything but trying to make money commercializing Christine, then you know those photos, her likeliness, uh, the copyrights, that should all belong to Christine. And she should be able to charge Wizard of the Coast for that money. So legally... I think Wizard Coast made a very big boo-boo. There are lawyers who sue you for thousands of dollars based on copyrighted images from Getty's. Um, Getty's images is a big one. Immerpick, Shutterstock, and yeah, it's pretty. It's a, it's actually a very interesting area of the law because given internet technology, like if you're trying to commercialize the use of a picture or a person then who has ownership of the, that, those materials? And do you need to compensate that person that you're trying? So definitely, I would say they commercialized Christine Sprinkles without compensating her fairly. And that was always my biggest gripe. Like I am, I was a fan of hers. Now she's gone. And I was a big supporter of the cosplay community. But the way they did it was so different from League of Legends or... You know, other cosplayers that I know of, that if they go to an event, there was a recent convention in Puerto Rico. My friend was went there, and he got paid. He got paid. He got a plane ticket. He got a really nice hotel, and he had someone chateau, like, drive him around, pick him from the airport, and all that stuff. Yeah, that happens to cosplayers. They do get paid. Uh, when you talk about the bigger cosplayers, and he's not even that big. He's, he's pretty big for a guy cosplayer. Uh, but yeah, they do that because they are getting a benefit. They advertise that you're going to be there and then people are excited or maybe they don't know you, and but they're like, oh, hey, there's a bunch of cosplayers and you know they are uh, supposed to be at this table and can take photos with them and that's great. That's exactly what Christine was doing. I mean, Christine was taking photos with uh, young people, old people, nice people, creepy people super creepy people sometimes like i'll look at some of the photos like oh well you can't i'm surprised they paid her enough to do that but they didn't pay her so i think the target was different i think that's the only thing is wedge jr cheeseburger is a less protected target than christine so they're not going to commercialize Wedge. They do promote him a ton, like they do, but they promote him under the table. Here's a card to spoil. Here is, you know, a link to your website. But imagine your player base being young Minecrafters or young people who have only watched YouTube all the time. Well, they're going to look at Wedge and they're going to look at Christine and they're going to say, hmm, in a marketing test, who would you rather promote your product? A cosplayer who looks like Averson Restored or a Wedge Junior Cheeseburger. So they have pretty much greenlit me to do whatever I want in this community and I can get away with it because I have been doing that. Now many of you say, oh, why don't you target a female cosplayer? For the reasons I said, I think they're being mistreated and I think they should charge money. Uh, so the whole concept of um, charging $5 for a photo, right? Rudy wanted to charge $5 for a professional person to take a plur... So I, it's a souvenir at that point because you get to take something home. It's not just, oh, I'm taking on my camera. This is a professional taking a photo that you get to take home with you in lifetime. Is it worth $5? I would say, yeah, probably. And Tolarian and Wedge got so upset by that concept. But that's the whole concept of cosplay. When you see Pikachu, Veronica, and Taylor, or whoever her name is, she goes to every convention. And you go to see Pikachu, it costs $50 to get her autograph and picture. And all she does is Pika Pika, right? Like, seriously. This happens in cosplay, but it doesn't happen in magic. So I would not criticize a cosplayer because I think they're being under... I think they are being treated very poorly by Wizard of the Coast. And I think they're not being promoted in the proper way for them to make a livelihood of it. And yes, I get the point. You, you do it because of passion. You, you do it because of passion. But people are passionate about League of Legends. They're passionate about uh, anime and stuff. Like, and they can make money from it. So I don't see the problem. And they're doing the same level of cosplay that I see in Magic sometimes. 
So I haven't been banned because they don't, they've kind of left Wedge on an island. They do give him, but they don't, he's not billed like Christine Sprankle was commercialized. Uh, GP Vegas, she was on all the material, websites, promos, every, all the material she was on. The one time I saw an ad for Wedge, they took the ad away after 15 seconds. Well, in this case, it was Channel Fireball, but they, you know, like, imagine, like, seeing an ad from Weds. Would you leave a good comment or a bad comment, right? Like, what would you say? Uh, would there be, like, a lot of bad comments um, because of um, the current scenario? So I think Christine is, was the perfect um, person for them, and they were really upset because the lifetime ban didn't come from the Mana Source. It didn't come from Tolarian. So I thought they had influence over Wizard of the Coast. They clearly do not. Wizard of the Coast is using them as puppets. I love magic products. Let's all buy standard crap. Oh, standard crap. Amazing. Standard, more standard crap. Is it worth it? Yup. <laughs> right? Like, those are product reviews, right? <laughs> so um, back to my um, belief. My belief is... the. Unsleeved media actually hurt them in their opinion that they had a commercialized plan to continue to use and literally abuse Christine Sprankles until there was nothing left from her. Like, and she mentioned that, and that's why she was starting the Patreon where Unsleeved Media went hellfire on because she needed money. She was living with her mom. Uh, I remember seeing the video, I commented on it, and I made a video about that video. And I was a very sad video. I felt bad for her. She lives with her mom in a trailer and in the middle of like nowhere in like a really poor area. Like this is your, the person that you have commercialized on every single product. Why would she, you not hire her Wizard of Coast so she doesn't need to have a Patreon so she doesn't. I don't know, the cost benefit just didn't, un I didn't understand why Wizard Coast didn't give her a job. Like, it just didn't make sense to me. Like, I'll be point blank. If someone like Christine came to my business and said, this is what I'm going to do for your business. I'm going to promote it. We're going to grab all these Twitter followers. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. I'm going to go to live events. I'm going to do sales for you. I would hire that person in a heartbeat him or her in a heartbeat because I would be like, all right, you have the experience, you've done it before, you have your own fan base, which is really important. And yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And you're on, you're exactly on topic. So if there was a marketing person who was really on topics, he or she had her own following, which was bigger than mine. Mine is like, okay, on LinkedIn, this 35,000, but there's much bigger. And they came to me and said, hey, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to go to events. I'm going to introduce your product. I'm going to promote your product. And I'm going to travel for you. I'm going to, you know, go, you know, to different cities. And then I'm going to pass out pamphlets. And well, I'll, people will take photos with me. And heartbeat, I would hire that person, especially if that person could be hired for less than 50,000, because that would be a huge, huge benefit. That's like, Two clients, right? Two clients a year. Three clients a year at most. Man, they, they, they made a mistake. So they've greenlit me essentially by not taking any action, even though I've been poorly behaved. And you guys know I'm poorly behaved. Otherwise, why would people <laughs> YouTube, right? Um... Yeah, I mean, it is quite interesting because uh, when you talk about um, who who uh, Unsleeve Media went after, I don't think he should have went after her. Um, I think her life was tough enough, and I think it was a tough life. Wedge, I don't think his life is very tough. He doesn't have a job. He's not working towards something, and... He's coming from a life of either wealth or laziness, sloth. One of the two. Maybe both. So at the end of the day, uh, Weds Jr., Mick Jr., Cheeseburger 
is not as important as Christine Sprinkles. That is the only conclusion I can draw. Tolarian is not as important as Christine Sprinkles. You see how Tolarian is not being advertised or advertised is the wrong word, commercialized is the correct word. He's the biggest YouTuber and he recently made a YouTube video saying that he isn't sponsored by Wizards of the Coast and he doesn't like them or he doesn't agree with them all the time. Yet his entire channel is based on Magic the Game. So if the Magic the Game died, he would be out of a job. So it is not a symbiotic relationship. That's not how Wizard of the Coast sees it. They don't see it as uh, we need Tolarian. Uh, Tolarian doesn't see it as he needs Wizard of the Coast, but he, in truth, he really does. The same with Mana Source. But Christine, she could have easily gone into League of Legends. She could have gone to something else and made more money. I never understood why she didn't leave Magic. And now there's some cosplayers that I've seen go around, but they're not very big cosplayers. And honestly, they don't look all that impressive in my opinion. So I'm getting phone calls like crazy and I'll let you guys go. Bye. <laughs> Do you guys like baby lions, baby antelopes, or baby sharks? Shark, shark, shark. Hmm.